Hello, it's Ben Holcomb here from Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering. I'm here at our Vibration Lab at UTS Tech Lab and this video is an introduction to the PSV 500 Scanning Laser Doppler Vibrometer, which you can see to my left here. This is uh, the extra uh, infrared variant of the PSV 500 and it is the first in country, so this is a really phenomenal piece of equipment. Um, we've invested heavily in this equipment at UTS. We're really privileged to have this uh, capability and it be unique in the country and indeed probably in the, in the region, if not the, the Southern Hemisphere. So we have to look after this equipment. The video is intended to show you how to start, to set it up with the hardware, what's in the box, how it all goes together. If you're in any doubt, please don't use it without consulting either myself or the lab technician, uh, lab manager. And of course, this all, supposes that you've done the inductions, you've prepared proper risk assessments and project risk management plan before you go and use the equipment for doing any kind of exercises. So, uh, you'll come and arrive to the hardware and you'll see obviously it's got a mains cable which you can plug into uh, an outlet and um, uh, power up the, start to power up the device uh, as normal. But before I do that, I'll show you where we keep the, the scanning head itself. So. This is the laser vibrometer scanning head, and this is the extra version of the scanning head, the helium, uh, the infrared version. We also have a recent addition to this system, which is the helium neon version, the red laser, 633 nanometer laser, which lives in the cabinet down here, and you'll see is essentially exactly the same as the helium, as the infrared device, but without the extra symbol on here. And uh, that lives in the box down here and is marked helium neon, 633 nanometers. Both devices uh, have with them a adapter or a small jumping plug, which we need to connect into the option socket on the back. And there's only one way to connect that and then that needs to be tightened up and that will allow us to use the device properly in a vibrometer. I'll show you that in a moment. We'll go back over to the, uh, the extra system. So here's the jumper plug in this case, which is in the bag down here. So take that one, connect it into the option plug, uh, the option socket, and just tighten this one up. You'll notice that this one comes with the tripod adapter plate already mounted to it, and that lives on this one. We'll be getting another one, hopefully, for the second head so we don't have to swap them back and forth because there are three screws in there and that takes a little bit of time. I've shown another video about how to mount vibrometers to the tripod. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about tripod mounting, but remember from that video that this is a heavy instrument and needs to be mounted carefully and properly and securely. So if you're in any doubt about how to do that, please consult that video and or talk to somebody about how properly to do it. I'll just set it up like this. Okay, we're not going to make any measurements today, but that's how we mount it to a tripod. Just turning it around, closing the door. Um, the cable for the vibrometer sits in the back and is a very complex cable with many different integrated uh, cables including ethernet connection and so on and some pins that essentially allow us to mount it properly to the head without any problems without any um, challenges we've got five meters of cable so plenty of cable if you need to put the divide the sensor head in a location like anechoic rooms for example and uh, have the control system elsewhere so lots of cable length when, you, when we connect the cable, you'll see that, that um, it, it can only go on one way. So you have to align, look at, look at the back, look at the pins, align the pins together and then gently push it into place. And as you turn this knob here, it will pull itself on and it clicks and that's it now properly secured and mounted. Okay. We've actually, uh, at some point, I've noticed, ended up with the cable the wrong way around. In fact, the cable's not the same at both ends, so that's quite interesting. This one you'll see has got an articulation on it. This is the head end, this is the controller end. So at some point somebody swapped those around, so I'm going to swap them back. Because we don't need the articulation in the back on the controller, but we do need it 
really at the head end so we can orient the head you know, in different locations. You can see now there that the articulation is working. So clearly the point of this video is to help make sure people use this equipment properly and somebody clearly at some point in the past didn't. So hopefully this video will help. Um, no problems. Okay, back to the front. Just turning this around. The best approach to powering up is to power up the laser vibrometer first. This is the vibrometer. And just let the vibrometer power up. The machine will make a few clicks. You'll see that because the monitor is already connected, this is powered up and the, the control of the PC that we uh, use to collect the data and to control the vibrometer is powered on secondly by pushing this power button here. Um, it's an industrial PC essentially in here, 15 inch, uh, sorry, 19 inch rack mounted. And um, that will eventually power up the, the uh, well, windows. And uh, there'll be a, a login um, and password which if you've completed the induction, you will know that information for you to be able to access the system. Uh, I'll just log us in and um, just show a couple of extra parts about how to get started in software, but this video isn't intended to show anything about software. So there are a few shortcuts on the desktop here. You can see we've got PSV acquisition shortcut. Um, we've also got PSV acquisition H, which is high, and P acquisition, which is V acquisition, which is very high. Okay, if you just take this one, the first thing it will tell us or ask us is do we want H or V, right? So it's the same as clicking one or the other of those two uh, shortcuts on the, on the other shortcuts on the desktop. Eventually that will launch the software and start a new project. But looking at the hardware, it's important to know that if we chose an H mode, that's high frequency mode, we've got an upper frequency limit of uh, 100 kilohertz, I believe is the correct uh, level. And then we use this junction box or front panel. So we've got four re eight reference channels, four generator channels, so signal one, signal two to four, um, some triggering and some auxiliary ins and outs. If, on the other hand, we're using the V mode device or the device in V mode, that's very high frequency up to 2.5 megahertz, uh, upper frequency limit, then this junction box is the one we use. We only have three references in that case, a trigger in, a, a sync, and a signal channel only. And that's um, the difference, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.